Hey there, Get Up and Go Challenge Day 18. Sharon Horn Elstrom here. And I realized, at least I think I did, I didn't go back and listen to it, but I think I forgot to give you an action item yesterday or a playbook or an activity or something to do. And if I did, I hope you still did something, but I want to go back and I want to remind you to ask yourself the question, what am I going to do going forward with respect to the area and the SOAP framework and the progress that I'm making? What am I going to do? What am I going to continue to do? How am I going to move forward? Am I going to do the lifeline exercise? Or, and if I'm going to do that, am I going to revisit that on, on a certain frequency? What am I going to do with whatever area? Now, I was working on, and I'm going to continue to work on, because I said I want to. I know I shared what I'm going to do, but I'm not sure I encouraged you and reminded you to keep in mind what are you going to do going forward are you going to go back and and make another try make another iteration at what you're working on or are you going to i guess what you're going to do now is today's question what you're going to do about your life are you going to continue to work in the area remember we've got our five areas of our life well there went my notes of trying to figure out acronyms physical mental emotional spiritual financial relationships and contribution as we go through the soap model. I want to go through the soap model one more time to really ingrain it inside of our being, to make it a subconscious automatic way, an automatic process that we use like so many. Guess what? We wouldn't function as human beings if most of what we do to function wasn't on autopilot wasn't already in our subconscious we wouldn't wake up we wouldn't breathe we wouldn't blink our eyes we wouldn't eat we wouldn't drink we wouldn't you know go to the bathroom we wouldn't do anything if we had to think about it I mean our heart wouldn't beat nothing our body wouldn't work and function if it wasn't handled by our brain and our subconscious just automatically and so how can we take some of the things that we want to have happen in our lives and make those automatic like Processes. The SOAP framework is a process. It's just a process we go through over and over and over again to manage change in ways that's best for us. So we've done, I did physical. We went physical, worked on my knee. Is my knee all fixed? No, I woke up this morning and it hurt. So that means I've got more work to do. Pain is a, an indicator that something is off for us. Something is wrong. And we can ignore it to our peril. Or we can ask ourselves and try to figure out and do a root cause analysis on ourselves and say, what the heck is really causing this pain? What is causing my knee to hurt? And then how can I eliminate that? Not throw band-aids on it, not slap CBD oil and ACE bandages and, and, and you know creams that get rid of the pain and mask the pain or take collagen or you know I'm drinking collagen in my coffee right now to see if that'll help. So we continue to make progress until we really figure it out, right? So, what you're gonna do today, it's time to pick another area of our life that we wanna work on. Now, we rated those these areas at the beginning of the challenge, and this is, this is my ratings from a previous challenge. It's not my ratings this challenge, because guess what? Each of these areas and how we feel about each of these areas changes over time. So, I've done a physical one, my knee. Again, it's not done yet, so I'm gonna to continue to make progress by continuing to take action and continuing to understand and uncover and figure out what is really causing this pain. Guess what? Maybe I actually really did hurt it and it's just gonna take months for it to heal. Or maybe I'm gonna to have to bite the bullet, go to the doctor and get an X-ray or something on it and find out if I physically damaged it or harmed it in some way that is not gonna be healed by my woo-woo mindset and exercising it and continuing to work it and doing the things. Maybe I'm doing just the exact opposite of what I should be doing. I'm not an expert. I'm not a knee expert, right? And then we just finished up and I just finished up. And it, of course it isn't done yet working on the financial areas of it, my aspects. So I've done my health, I'm doing my wealth, and I am putting together a, an online group coaching program that will cost $3,000 because I want to bring in an additional $3,000 a month. Well, I'm not even going to get into that. Is that realistic? How can you do that? Because some people would believe, oh my God, that's impossible. For me, it's just like, you know, hey, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> anyway, now I'm going to pick another area. So when I say what you're going to do, I'm, I'm going to pick another area. You can continue to work on the same area. Would I probably make more progress if I kept working and went over and over and over this model again and again and again? sticking on my knee, focusing on my knee? Absolutely. By the time I go through it three times, I would probably have a real solution and be done with it. 
but I want to demonstrate that this can apply to any area of our life, any aspect of our life, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual health, whether it's our financial or our wealth, or whether it's our relationships or our contribution to society. So relationships is another one that I rank pretty low for myself. I'm, I do a lot of things on my own these days for practical purposes. But what I want to do is demonstrate how can you apply the soap model to the relationships of your life? How might you do that? So I'm picking relationships. That's one I'm going to go through the soap model on over the next four days. And all I want you to do today is pick one. Pick an area of your life that you want to focus on and actually go through the soap model with me. I want you to do it. It doesn't do me any good to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. I've done it hundreds of thousands of times. I need you, I want you to do it. I want you to benefit like I have by having a framework and a foundation that just makes sure that I get better results each and every time I am faced with a challenge or faced with a change. For example, yesterday my granddaughter didn't come, she stayed home. We hung out all weekend, we went up to the cabin, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and so I think she probably missed her mom and wanted to hang out with her mom yesterday. Now she'll be back today, but I found out at the last minute that she wasn't gonna come. That's a change. So. Did I be upset or, or, or sad, a little bit sad, that I didn't hang out with my granddaughter yesterday? Yes, but also no, because I immediately filled that time with projects and things that I've been wanting to do. I, I did a hackathon with ClickFunnels. I did um, a 21 day challenge that I'm participating in and I actually got to, to listen to it at my leisure and participate in it live because I wasn't trying to do that while hanging out with my granddaughter. So there's always an upside. There's always things we can flow into. But in the olden days when I was younger, if something changed, I used to get all bent out of shape and upset about it. But now I just immediately go into solution mode. Okay, I'm not gonna, it's not a problem, it's just a change. A lot of the things that we look at as problems, they're not really bad or problems. They're just different than usual. During COVID-19, how many of us, okay, all of us, have had to deal with things that were different than they were before? <clears throat> I personally don't like the phrase new normal. I don't know about you, but I don't think there's going to be a new normal. I don't think there's ever been a normal, at least not in my life. Life is just life, and our lives are changing all the time. We create frameworks and processes and systems and habits to make it feel normal for us and just so we can get through our days more efficiently and faster and easier, right? Without having to think about everything. There's, we're inundated with so much information and so many options and so many choices. We have to put on filters in order to, to make our life work or we would just always be in a constant state of overwhelm. So I'm committing right here, right now that I am picking a relationship out of the seven things. I encourage you to pick one, just pick one thing. Um, it's tempting to try to do everything at once because as humans, we like to do that. At least as women, we like to multitask. I don't know if we like to, but we, we have been required by our species to be able to multitask. I love the studies that come out and, and the people and the men that say, it's impossible to multitask. All right, it might be impossible for you, but guess what? If moms didn't multitask, if moms and women couldn't multitask, this world would not be functioning, as, okay, and you can argue is it functioning well or not, as well as it is, right? And it'll continue to function better as more and more women get into uh, positions of leadership. I, I firmly believe that. So, challenge today, pick one, and I will be with you tomorrow, and we are going to go through the SOAP framework yet again. Yes, again, we're doing it again until it just becomes a part of your nature and automatic for you, as automatic for you as it is for me. <clears throat> and I'm gonna demonstrate it with respect to relationships. And I think I've already decided what type of relationship I'm going to apply it to and I will admit I will admit here and right now I am scared to do this because if, if I weren't afraid to do this one I would have already done it so that's a little sneak peek on tomorrow it's gonna to be relationships I'm not gonna tell you what type of relationships but you'll find out tomorrow as part of the S in so if I can help you in any way if you have questions about anything we've done if I forgot to give you homework yesterday or an assignment or an activity or encourage you to take some action do that. Use today as kind of a catch-up day. A day to say, oh, I missed this, I missed that. I want to I do a little bit more work on 
th this part. I want to I want to brainstorm some more options. Whatever it is for you, use it as a catch-up day. Pick your next of the seven areas or the same one if you want to continue to work on the same one. And I will be with you tomorrow. And we will jump right into the framework that will help us all to get results in days that take most people months or weeks or years to get. All right, have a great day.